Hi there, and welcome to this tutorial. We're currently in After Effects, and to start off, I'll play the timeline for a short bit. Looks like pretty solid keyframing, right? What if I told you that setting up this animation sequence costed me maybe one minute maximum? Stay tuned and I'll walk you through a nifty tool we've been developing recently that's now in beta release. If you're an audiovisual enthusiast, VJ musician, or you happen to work with a lot of them, you might have stumbled upon the term MIDI. MIDI is short for Musical Instrument Digital Interface. It's a communication protocol that connects a wide variety of electronical musical instruments. This particular music piece that you just heard at the intro is typically something that's a combination of a recorded MIDI track fed into an audio source. The source in this example would be a drum computer. A MIDI track by itself doesn't have sound. It's purely a form of recorded timing messages. You have to play back the sequence through an audio engine in order to make sense of it. Just like the drum computer can't be heard as long as there won't be any timing data fed into. So clearly the combination of both gives the sound. But since we've already recorded the timing of the sound into a so-called MIDI track, can't we use that timing data for placing keyframes at exactly the same moment the sound is heard? This is when the simple tool steps in. You first need to have a MIDI file that you can load in by going to File and Load MIDI File. You might got this from someone else or you're able to export this file yourself from a workstation like Ableton or Reason. If you have a corresponding audio track, it's important to know at what speed this audio track was rendered at. That would be the beats per minute that you can fill in here. 124 and the composition will be set up at 30 frames per second. I'll leave the rest at default and I'll come back to it later. For now, I'll just hit the export to J6 button, save the file and head over to After Effects. In After Effects, we start off with a clean project. I'll go to File, Scripts, Run Script File, look for the file, hit Open. The script generated a composition with a bunch of solids. And if I drag in the corresponding audio file and hit play, we're back at where we started off. If you take a closer look at the solids, I'll take this one, you see that the opacity channel is being keyframed. From there on, you can link this data to different objects in your own composition. If you're already familiar with how ADSR works, I suggest go to the outro of this tutorial for information about how you can download this tool. Just stick with me if you'd like to know more about this tool. If we take a step back at the MIDI to keyframe tool, you see that this visual representation has quite some similarities with the generated keyframes in After Effects. This representation shows you how a MIDI message will be translated into a script that After Effects is able to read out. There are two messages important for creating the sequence of five keyframes, a node all message and a node off message. These two events in time are baked in the MIDI file. If you'd like to change them, you have to go back to your MIDI file. However, we have control over what's happening in between. The attack value tells you how many frames it will take to get to the velocity of the node on value. The velocity is also a value that's baked in the MIDI file. It's basically a value between 0 and 127 that represents the intensity of the note on. Most of the time a higher value will result in a louder noise. For animation purposes this value is being normalized to a value between 0 and 100. In After Effects it wouldn't make sense to set the opacity higher than 100. So in this example the velocity will get its full capacity after 3 frames. Since we're trying to underline the sound with visuals, it wouldn't make sense to set the attack to zero, so that it immediately will be at its full opacity. How short and seemingly unnoticeable, the sound waves of sound need to build up, as it increases in volume. A visual representation of this process would also take a slightly bit longer than instantly a fully wide square. The decay value determines how many frames it will take to get to a sustained state. 
I'm already mentioning the sustain value because the sustain needs to be of a certain value, otherwise the decay wouldn't even be noticeable. The sustain value is a percentage of the velocity, in this example 80. So if the velocity will be 100, the sustain will be 80% of this, so 80. The decay value will tell how many frames it will take to get to this value. You might already guess the decay value won't be noticeable if the sustain will be set at 100. It's perfectly fine to leave the sustain at 100, however, a lower sustain value will emphasize the peak a little bit more, like an overshoot, a bit more punch. In the end, it's just a matter of taste and if it suits the sound. You could describe the sustain state as its rest state. This comes to an end when the note off message is triggered. The note off message finishes off the sustain state and will initiate the release sequence. In this example, the release will last for two frames until it hits zero value. It's basically the attack the other way around. You would normally also give this a higher value than zero. Just as with the attack where the sound needs to evolve into its full velocity, the release lets the sound cool down to its zero state. The visual representation will give the whole an organic feel and more faithful to what's being heard instead of just a square on off blink of a white square. Now the keyframe sequence is finished, it will go through the exact same process with the next note on message. You might think that with a very short hit of a kick sound, this whole process would hardly be noticeable. But I encourage you to experiment with different values and really aim for the feel a certain sound has. Thank you for watching this tutorial. The MIDI2 keyframe tool is available at our Patreon. Please consider supporting the further development of this tool by liking and subscribing. It helps us a lot. If you are an audiovisual enthusiastic, you can become a patron. In return, you get early access to pre-beta releases, access to loads of resources and work files. Have a look, there might be something valuable for you. As always, feel free to get in touch for suggestions, bugs and improvements. And we'll catch up next time.